Hello, this is a video about <clears throat> commodity prices, Monte Carlo simulation, and uh, how to incorporate mean reversion from commodity prices in financial modeling. I have been working on this for a while, kind of before the sudden changes in some commodity prices that have occurred. Now, I've also, when I'm trying to work on this, I end up watching videos about uh, these poor people in Ukraine. It's very touching to me. I'm sorry to mention this, but I kind of get irritated by when people are talking about, oh my gosh, Let's blame some politician for the uh, 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 petrol price increase. So let's talk about that instead of talking about this tragedy. So I, I, I'm sorry I'm going to be a hypocrite in talking about this. Now, I, uh, I'm going to also refer to some Excel files. Okay. Now, when I refer to these Excel files, let me see what I did here. When I, uh, uh, you know, put the name in here, oh, I still have her, uh, this one, I, I'm kind of changing the, my, at least the, the only thing I can do really is, is, uh, is change the name. Okay. Now, if you want to change the name in your Excel file, I think this is a good name to put in these days. Um, you just, I think you can right click here kind of and go to edit the property and uh, put the correct name. So let, let, let's change the name for once, okay? And I'll do this. That's my kind of feeling about this. Now, I am uh, first going to talk to you about, I've made a PowerPoint slides on this. And I've uh, 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 put four kind of files together. They're really four. Uh, uh, they're, they're four of these files. And the first thing I've got to tell you is that sometimes this Monte Carlo, really, it's misapplied. And, and uh, it's, it's only valuable. It's only valuable really when there's some sort of option a debt is an option a debt instrument is an option it's got a downside and no upside and all that stuff and i have studied i remember trying to think this monte carlos it was in the I, it must have been in the it must have been in the late 80s or something i, I started looking at this and i thought oh this answers everything. There was a program called At Risk that still exists. And I thought, oh, this is so cool. And then I, the more I did it, the, the fewer applications I could find in real life. And so I thought, no, I can't do it. And I'm coming back around just a bit because Monte Carlo simulation, if you want to prove things to yourself without reading some, overdoing some statistical uh, uh, textbooks, you can use it. Okay, and the, but the final thing that's really been a struggle for me for so many years is that unless unless you make some adjustments for mean reversion, and don't assume that Einstein's Brownian motion applies to all financial instruments, it's again kind of useless. And how do you correctly make? these adjustments for this mean reversion. I've made a few other videos about this. This time I'm trying to really, really do it. Now, I hope a, a couple of other uh, uh, points. Try to do things yourself. Don't get intimidated. Oh no, I'm not applying this thing. It says in some textbook, I'm supposed to do it this way. Do it yourself. Play around with it. Don't be afraid to try some of your own things to see if they really make sense. Now, the the idea about Monte Carlo sim simulation is you're kind of creating a randomized sample, quite kind of, and that's 
that's what a lot of, you know, in medicine, they, that you, you want to make sure, I don't know when they were testing these vaccines, that the samples were really random and all that. It's the same, It's not the same kind of thing, okay? But a little bit, okay? <sighs> when we talk about things like oil price or natural gas prices, which are really, uh, uh, in a way, a lot more fascinating than the oil prices, uh, uh, what, what's going on with them because they drive the electricity prices too. Uh, the, the true volatility comes from supply and demand. True mean reversion comes from some sort of marginal cost of production. The volatility can change over time because there are periods when you have surplus capacity and the prices can get really low. And then there are periods when the, the capacity constrained and you can get crazy prices that are way higher than the true, this mythical, impossible to find marginal cost of production. And now let's not forget about all this with all of this discussion going on. I'm not claiming I'm an expert at anything. Please, please, please. But we'll, we'll, then we're going to, we're going to kind of look at the, show you how you can really practically apply this into models. Now, I'm going to make, I think, a series of videos about this. There is no way I'm going to get this done uh, 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 now. My thinking about how to apply this in VBA, my thinking about uh, 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 how to put this in a, a model keeps changing, so I don't want to claim that this is... Okay, now let's work on... Uh, Part one, come on, come on. Why can't I? Ah, there we go. Let's part, work on part one of the analysis. Now I've uh, uh, I had to interrupt myself because I had a little class and hope I'm sitting up a little more straight, unlike some man who slouches all the time and destroys the world, including commodity prices. But I don't care about those compared to other things. I'm going to talk about how we get the data and present the data. For me, if you don't have this step and try to understand a lot of history, it's crazy. My friend, I can't mention her name. She was involved in some protests in one of those countries, not Ukraine, but kind of another one. And she showed me how some banks do analysis of refining margins, and they don't put a whole lot of historic data. They don't show you long-term stuff. They don't put it in real terms. They don't compare it and really evaluate whether we have some mean reversion or what the volatilities really are. Instead, they have some stuff and they make their own forecast and say, we're smarter than everybody else. What fraud! Okay, we're going to use simulation. We're going to first get this analysis from a, something called the pink, pink sheet, and then we're going to get it from the Federal Reserve Economic Database. And then we'll show you some volatilities, and, and we'll, we'll try to do this. Now, I start with oil prices, and then I show, okay, here's the long-term history. That's always, of course, when we're looking at commodities, convert this to real data, and, you know, the price. This is kind of bad news. It's not as high as it was. Uh, uh, well, this is this is not got the very latest, but but uh, here and it's a possibility. What's the real cost of production? Here's the '73 shock, the uh, uh, '79 Iran crisis. Here's the big decline for many many years, and then here's this gigantic run up in prices and the economic recession maybe caused by the run-up in prices, who knows, layman too. And then here's, a, it, we seem to, everybody thought, oh, the oil price will always be 100, the oil price will always go down to 40, the oil price will always be around 60. Uh, we don't know what this cost of production is, but at least we can look at it. And then the other kind of thing is interesting. When you use this data from the World Bank, which is just wonderful the way they make it so easy to get, and then you play with it. You put different time elements in and correlations, and we see the volatility of oil compared to the volatility of maize. Amazing kind of correlation. Here's the volatility of, of uh, here's the, the, the price of oil compared to the price of copper. You can get these things. Now, to get these things, 
just do this. I did, I just made this with a class. Okay, and and do it. Well, what does that mean? Uh, uh, in folder in in chapter number one under the database section, there's a there's a folder called commodity prices, and I've got this file, and I've got another more detailed file. Okay, the wonderful thing about this file, and all it's not my file, of course. The wonderful thing is that you can just very, very quickly. Now, I don't know, sometimes it takes a, a, a tiny little bit of time when I'm making a recording. You go and you click a button, and when you click that little button, it just goes to the web, uh, website and takes this World Bank uh, uh, pink uh, sheet. They call it the pink sheet, whatever. I should, should know some official. I should be better at this. And then I've got it through February. And then you just update this. You just click on that button to update this. And then uh, uh, I present this data, and all it does is use a, that NA function. I'm going to show you in a separate. Uh, I'm going to make a couple of more videos around this. I have to. Some people have yelled at me and been very mean and say, I hate you because you don't show me exactly how to make a macro. So I'm going to try to show you a little more carefully on how to do some of this. If we start with the oil price, they had this oil price, and you can make it in real or nominal terms, okay? And I hope the real, if we go, go backwards, they're higher. If we just, let's, let's, and I, I just make two different graphs. And when I make two different graphs, this is this, we can show them on a separate scale or the same scale. Of course, this didn't matter. I don't know why it changed a little bit, but whatever. These are two of exactly the same graphs. I, it's not funny. Nothing's funny these days. Uh, uh, if I go all the way, way back, way back, let's see how far I can go to, what is this? 19. 60. And you can see what happened to the oil price. It was all very stable. The oil embargo, the 79, the flattening, the one I just showed you. And then if we want to compare this oil price to, let's compare it to the, the, the Brent, or let's compare it to the uh, Dubai, or let's compare it to the, to the uh, WTI. Okay, they're all highly correlated. And a theme we're going to go through is why gas prices are so different. And they don't, of course, the answer is that transportation is so much a bigger deal in the cost of, of, of the, the natural gas price that we, we, we can't do it the same way. If we look and compare the oil price to the natural gas price in the U.S., you can see that, oh, there was kind of a lot of correlation, but then here's the shale gas. Okay, and then we can compare the oil price to the gas price in Europe, and we're going to get a dramatic graph. And there are two dramatic events here, not one. Okay, and the two dramatic events are, number one, this dramatic decline, this period, this period when the natural gas price was so low in Europe, it was about the same as the natural gas price in the US. And of course, this is many standard deviations away. If we compare this to the gas price in Japan, uh, uh, we get a much tighter correlation, obviously. And if I compare the, in, maybe I'll compare instead of the oil price average, let's compare the Brent oil price. And if you look really carefully, there's a little bit of a time lag. Uh, uh, and that's just because there's a formula for, for computing these prices. And you get the same kind of thing where it's very correlated. Now, if we compare the price, and this is what you can do. If you compare the price of oil, now I'm not going to go through the well, I'm just doing this. I'm kind of a hypocrite. You can just go and compare kind of all the all, all the different commodities and look at them, and you see these trends. And one of my 
point here is all these people, I try to learn German and, and listen to these experts at the price of natural gas, it's never been this high and all that, may be true. Well, of course, the natural gas price, has, the oil price has never been this high and all that. Well, part of the analysis is we adjust it for real prices and nominal prices. Now I'm going to show you in a different video, well, it's almost too simple to do, how to do some of this stuff. And they're very simple macros here. But let's compare the the price of uh, 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 gas in the U.S. How about to the gas price of gas in Japan? Now when you do this, I don't want different scales. I might want to put the same scale so we can really kind of see what's going on. That's just a simple little macro. Now, all of these things, first of all, the gas price volatility, it's interesting in Japan, it's lower than in the US, it was very high and we can compute the volatility over, that's kind of start much, much later on and I should uh, do it like this. And these are all, done with a, a, a uh, <laughs> NA function, okay? And what happened here? I, did I start here? I don't, I want to start in, in, in uh, maybe here. Let's, let's, let's start in somewhere. Oh, come on, ah, come on. You know, I'm, I have to show my picture and all this stuff here. Okay, here's the, gas price, uh, the, the gas price in the U.S., you had these spikes, and then everybody said, aha, we know this very old technology that we we can get this this uh, trapped gas down in the ground, maybe we can find some oil, that's all this uh, shale gas, and that's what we uh, have, and it's, there's, there's, here we show you, I show you the volatility, there's almost no correlation interestingly enough, and then we'll compare that to the gas price in Europe. Okay, and I, this is an introduction to this, and I hope we have these on the same scale now. It's almost like we have to do this, but this was, <laughs> this is of course dramatic, unbelievable, but this was dramatic as well. What happened here? How did this price get so low and what happened did, uh, when this price went so low that you 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 got something like like a, a, a below something like a two, what what is that it, it says 1.82 price in Europe how did that happen of course it's the same time the oil price uh, uh, went down and so those are some of the things and I would encourage you of course to uh, when you just look at this, I hope you can see the the mean reversion. Now, somebody telling me, ah, oh, I know what prices will mean revert to. And when you use mean reversion, don't do what I do. You make a little formula where you put the mean price minus the last year price and multiply it by the mean reversion factor. Mean price minus last, not the other way around. That let's say the mean price is 70 and the today's price is 120 you'll have a negative number there, which means you're gonna gradually push it down to that 70. And how fast you do that is a, is a, 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 a very difficult issue. You notice I compute the uh, uh, volatilities here, which are, are really, really easy. So you can get this file. I have to, maybe I have to upload this into the website, but certainly if you ask for that resource, things which are the resource library, which a lot of people have asked for, and I've sent it out a lot of people to a lot of people, you, you can get it there. Now let's go and let's just make sure that we have the, the names correct on this one. Oh, there's bottom. Okay, now we then on the next one, let's, let's, uh, um, uh, 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 I better save this maybe because I, I, uh, read it in. Now let's look at a little more detail. And when we look at a little more detail, I want to get some daily prices and I have to, uh, uh, I don't have to do anything really because I'm just making a little video for free. But uh, uh, let's go and get this data on a day by day or uh, 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 whatever, week by week basis. And here's another problem. 
that that pink data is great, but it doesn't give you the ability to compute refining margins. It doesn't give you the ability to, you didn't see petrol prices, you didn't see diesel prices, you didn't see electricity prices. Sometimes we have to go to other sources, and one of these sources that I've talked to you about a whole lot is this, uh, is this FRED, Federal Reserve Economic Database. I sometimes wonder if that's there's really good stuff you can get with this. And by doing this, by doing this, you can find volatility of daily prices. Now, the formula for volatility is, is this is what people where I worked at the bank used to tell me, and that's fine. It's the standard deviation, the standard deviation of the percent change in price. Now, they would always give me a little formula that said, okay, if you've got month by month by month data, you have to take that standard deviation and multiply it by the square root of how many periods in a year. There are 12 months in a year. Most years, I think, have 12 months. Some people have to put that in Excel all the time. Those goddamn auditors. Sorry about swearing. <clears throat> okay, well, calm down, because there are more important things in the world than rebelling against auditors. Uh, uh, you can get the daily volatility, and then from that, if it's daily, there are about 252 trading days in a year. Okay, we can get all worked up about if there are 253 or something. And we take that one, and we, raise, we multiply this times 252, but we take the square root of it. Why in the heck do you take the square root of it? Well, I'll show you. And then we can take the monthly mo uh, volatility and get the implied volatility. Now, then we can take an annual number and get the annual number on a day, uh, uh, on a on a year by year basis. Just take it either. I think it's better to take it at the end of each year and compute the volatility at the end day from this year to the end day of the last year and all that and get the the annual volatility. And you see, this is oil. You see, uh, 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 this is the daily oil price, the same sort of pattern. I hope you see mean reversion. We did it on a real basis. And if we look at uh, uh, gasoline, uh, we see the same sort of thing. They all have a lot of mean reversion. Now, we can use, oh, look at the refining margins. Look how volatile those refining margins are. Uh, uh, on a, a daily basis compared to what they are on an annual basis. It all comes back. I don't know what happened here, but this again is just the price of petrol minus the price of, you take the price of petrol. My friend told me how to do that. You multiply it by 42 to get a gallon to a barrel and you, you do it. I had to do it yourself because they don't show you this. And then we have the natural gas price and this is the U.S. gas price. Very kind of US uh, uh, overdone, but they had the daily prices. There's some seasonality perhaps, but there's obviously a whole lot of mean reversion. Some of that seasonality, some of it's not. And here is our European uh, gas price. Now what you do is you just go, and I don't know some person who got, mm, hmm, hmm, hmm. I don't want to talk about this. I have real problems with my life sometimes, but that this person, he said, ah, oh, you can never ever use the workbooks.open method. You have to use the whatever it is, this this uh, data, and this, uh, uh, what, what, what do you call it, uh, power query. Okay, I got to learn that. If somebody is going to explain that to me, I'd love it. But this works just fine. You get the, you, the, the, the hardest thing is to go and get the names off of the Fred sheet. You know, all you do is, you go to, you type in Google Fred natural gas price or something like that. And it gives you the graph and it's got a little code number and you just put this little code number over here and you press a button and I'm not gonna go through all of this and you get all the data series. Now, when we get the data series on a day by day basis, let's look at the, the these ones, okay? And who cares about all this stuff about, tells you where they got it. Yeah, that's good should kind of collect that, but we have 6,000 series here. If we go to the, the where, where's our, our, our Brent? Okay, and up here we have 
87, so we have 9,000. I'll tell you something. If you try to use the indirect function, which I'm, I've got a love-hate relationship with, like a lot of other people, uh, uh, if you do that, it gets really, really slow. So out of all the old wives' tales about what slows Excel down, my stupid experience, which is just messing around and see how slow things are, this indirect function with a lot of data is just a disaster. Now, when you look at the data, when you when you look at the data, there's some holes in the data, and I'm gonna walk, have another video where we go through kind of this. And so instead of using the indirect function, I think it's so much better to write a little bit of VBA code and I don't know if anybody's going to be interested in this, but some people ask, do some VBA code. And all you do is you, you, you basically say, OK, I'm going to use the lookup function and I'm going to I'm going to change the name of the the the, the name of the whatever, <laughs> blah, 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 the 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 the, the, the lookup function. I'm going to grab a different sheet. OK, and doing that with a little macro again, here's the theme of the macros. They fix the problems with Excel and then you have to adjust it for missing data. And then you can get the percent change. And with the percent change, I'll always get the natural log of this period divided by last period. And then you can get the standard deviation. You should use the dot S, not the dot P. And then you can adjust that for the the uh, blah 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 the, the the periods, and then you can just do a uh, how did I do this? I actually did a we'll we'll do the re the the standard deviation of a year by year, and you can get the 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 answer of of the annual volatility. And I did A06, what's AO? And this one I used the average. So when I just told you I used the end of the year, it wasn't quite true. If I would use the end of the year, you could use the lookup. And whether you should use the lookup, all of this stuff, I used to get obsessed. Oh, no, I got to go read a, a, a textbook by Box and Cox. And in my, where I went to school, they made you take a, in the 1980s, I noticed they don't do this anymore, a whole course on time series analysis. And in that time series analysis, they did not tell you, oh, I studied that and used ARIMA, what an autocorrelation, integrated moving average, some crap. Sorry, no, the, the, this box guy was my best friend, so I shouldn't say that. Okay, there. So we've got this big deal, this big deal where the we know that there's mean reversion. And the reason we know there's mean reversion is that if this annual volatility was the same as this, then it would follow the characteristics of this famous Brownian motion slash random walk, which is just even the stock prices don't follow that. <laughs> just for people to say that the that, that anything in finance or human activity follows the principles of some electrons that were studied on how the electrons move is, is when you really think about it, that's what it's all built on, and it's absolutely crazy. So that's there, that's the reading of of the data. Now uh, uh, let me go back to my PowerPoint. So I've just put a couple of uh, uh, examples of that. I, and now we're going to get into the Monte Carlo. And the first thing I have to do is show you, I don't have to do anything. The first thing I'm going to do is show you a different file. So let's close this file. This is a pretty big file because it's got the daily prices. And with the daily prices, I can, uh, uh, I don't know how to say that. With the daily prices, I can compute the daily volatility, the monthly volatility, the weekly volatility, and the annual volatility, and see if there's this famous 
principle that you get the same volatility for different time periods, which is the answer. This is the answer of what a, 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 a Brownian motion or non-mean reverting series does. Now, what you can do then is, is uh, uh, okay, let's look at the next file. So again, there are going to be four files. This next file is a file, and again, I wasted a lot of time on this, and I'm going to take you through some of the macros in in a different uh, uh, in in a different video. And I made a file called Monte Carlo, not the not the financial model example, commodity uh, uh, commodity Monte Carlo simulation with a random walk. Now this is on the the website again. Okay? And I have tried to explain this and I got some really crap over the reviews, rightfully so. Rightfully so when I uh when I first kind of tried to explain what's happening here. Okay? Now here is for me the big formula and i hope let's let's i hope i put a little bit of this in in the in the uh, uh whoops let me make sure and get this so i can see it okay in the in the powerpoint slides and we're going to try now to instead of we can compute volatility, we're going to try to use Monte Carlo to actually find out what kind of uh, 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 um, we're going to use Monte Carlo simulation to find this mean reversion factor. Better move this just a minute, uh, uh, and then we can do it a couple of ways. And this, I discovered by accident. I didn't read some statistics books. I used to do that. Okay. You can measure the, uh, 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 for you measure the percent change in price and then take the square of it. And basically that's a variance. If the, the variance is the, the square of the, 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 the value minus the mean, you know, and all that stuff. Okay. And if the mean is zero, the variance is just that. The, the, the mean of the, percent change should be zero. Okay, if there's a trend, maybe a little bit different, but not to worry about actually. So then we can measure volatility as the variance raised to the point half power. And we can, when we do our analysis, we can take the uh, uh, first year price versus one year, two years, three years, one month, two months, three months, and see if that volatility increases over time. And when we do our analysis, I struggled with this. You could use the, when you compute your time series, and everything is about time series, you can take price in the last period. That should be T minus one kind of is the is the the price in this period t is price in t minus one plus price in t minus one times volatility times a draw from a random normal distribution of course you can get crazy arguments about whether things are normal or not please oh what a waste that would be okay and here is the thing with a random walk things move in proportion to time that's what i've said and we're going to prove that that happens and when I run these simulations, there's something psychological that I found. If you just press a button and Excel just hangs up for a while, you think, oh, what in the heck's going on? If you put a little screenshot, not a screenshot, but a, a, a little user form, and I'm going to show you that you can say, okay, what simulation are we on? And you can use this, you can do your simulations in Excel, or you can do your, and in Excel, here is the kind of outputs I get. So what you do is you create kind of a one simulation little series that can go day by day for years. And then that you, you, put, you input your volatility. So this is, uh, uh, this is the uh, uh, 
did I do this right? This is the mean price minus last year's price times the mean reversion. If you don't have any mean reversion, this goes away. Uh, uh, the 004 is the mean reversion. And then you go back up and say, okay, what was the, the you take the last price, this one, I should have put the thing there, and you mu multiply by the exponent, X, exp, e to the whatever of the volatility times this. And I didn't know that. And I couldn't find any good documentation of that. And once you get used to it, it's as easy as anything. And then when you do that, you get these volatilities. And if you, you get the volatility for one period, this is the volatility for the second period where you take in, in period 252, you take the change versus the first year price. And this is the, the two, what happened in the second period. This is the, I, 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 there must've been a 500 one. I don't know what I did there. Stupid. Oh, well. Okay, and then you take that and you get a whole bunch of random simulations. Of course, you're going to get completely different answers. But when you put all these together and get the average of all of these uh, differences, here's my 504, I don't know what I kind of did here. Uh, then what happens is you should, the answer you should get, the answer you should get is if you take the, volatility of 252 period versus one period that 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 uh, uh, amount and you take the variance not the standard deviation the standard deviation you just take to the point 0.5 i would struggling like crazy with this i couldn't find it written up okay and you should get the answer that if you just take this, here's the number of periods, 504, which is 252 times 2, the variance should be that. And I did this one. This had something like 20,000 simulations. And you can read up and somebody says, ah, Excel's random number isn't quite perfect and all this. And you don't get it exactly perfectly. Now, if you do it a different way, if you do it a different way, in this way, you run it, you make a little VBA program. And I didn't show the VBA program. I suppose I'll show the VBA program now. And I'm going to take you in, through that on a different one. So when we do this VBA, we gradually go from one to the other to the other. And I tell people, Excel is a great program. I had a student who told me his father started teaching him Excel when he was 10 years old. That's something that my poor children, I didn't even teach them there, and I had to spell Vlodomir's name correctly. But you can do this formula. Here's, here's how you make those labels, and I'll walk you through some of that and with some macros. When you do this, uh, uh, you can make this, you have to make a, 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 a uh, array and it's a pain if you haven't done this if you haven't struggled with your life through some old fortran programs and everything else but you just make this and you 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 multiply it by this exponent this is the price for the last period you keep track you remember all this stuff and then you add the mean price minus this times the mean reversion and you make a simulation in vba when you do this and, and, and this was the fascinating thing, that, that this example only has 500 simulations, so that one, that's no good. When I did this uh, uh, with more simulations, okay, I got to move this up here. Okay, isn't this method so cool? Come on! Why is it taking so long? What's going on here? Okay, then when we do that, you can see it's almost perfect. It's the 20,000 simulations, and, and, and we get all this perfectly. And what you do is you just click on this button, and it shows you what simulation you are. And then it keeps track of all the simulations. And that proves that this is what, this is what uh, 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 Monte Carlo number one can do for you. And this is what's supposed to happen with a random walk that the variance increases over time. And these annual variations, when we use the daily variations, when we don't have mean reversions, they don't produce anything like what's the real world. Okay, now you can do other things. So 
here, let me just show you. I wanted to do this one with kind of a... Uh, when you do this, I think it's, it's, oops, come on. Okay. Here, I've got this one. I've, this is, this is random walk. Okay. And when we run uh, some simulations, this just presses a simulation and that's okay. Well, we got some prices predicted. This is year by year prices. They, they okay, that's reasonable. And then we do another one. Oh, this is not so reasonable. The price gets down to almost nothing. Uh, let's let's make sure we can <sighs> push it here. Oh, come on, you know it's it, 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 it's a nervous thing to make videos. And then we do another one. Ooh, this the price gets down to twenty. We do some more. Here's the price getting up to two hundred. Oh, that not so bad. Here's the, that's not so bad, and you keep going, okay. Ah, that was at a really low one. This, the price gets really low, but I'm, I'm looking for some scenarios. Let's just keep going. We just, it just takes a random draw from this one. Come on. <laughs> when it does, this is the horrible thing about doing these kind of things, I guess. There, I, I just showed you one with 300 prices that last for many years. Here's a 400 price, and the price stays at 200, kind of not ever happened. But that's what random walk gives you. Here's again, it goes down to zero, and this one goes down to 300. In this one, I just did a simple, uh, uh, a simple, forecast using the annual volatility and no mean reversion. And you get crazy numbers. Now, if you're going to apply these numbers, these crazy numbers without mean reversion in your, in your financial model, you'll get idiotic results. You really will. Here's another low one. Here's a, here's a, I'm looking for some really high ones and they should be there. 400, here's one. 600, we got a 600 price. How crazy is that? Okay, now what we're going to do is exactly the same thing, but we're going to add a mean reversion factor. So let's make sure that this is all okay. There we go. It's, it's, it's all okay. And let's close this one. I'm not even going to save it because that'll waste your time. And then let's do take that same, basically that same file. And this time, oops, let's take that same file and look at the uh, mean reversion. Okay. And uh, why am I doing it like this? Okay. And all this, there, there's nothing else in this file other than putting some mean reversion uh, factors in here. So we go to the, not the Monte Carlo financial model, but the Monte Carlo with mean reversion. Okay. And this time, Okay, all I did first, and this is what I would suggest that you do. And there's, I don't think, here's the, the big deal. I'm not afraid of this anymore. I'm not afraid of some mathematician in the bank somewhere doing a Koleski function or something like that. Uh, 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 and why is it taking so long to open? I don't know. And what happened to our other graph? I'm gonna move this over, I guess. And this time, here's what I did. I said, okay, look, for our oil price, and we could use this for natural gas or anything else, for our oil price, we want a annual volatility, and we get this from the commodity uh, uh, price. So this is, you know, the control uh, square bracket and F5, okay? And I would like the result I would like, if I use this daily volatility, I would like to have the result that my annual number, my annual number that comes from all of this, uh, uh, <laughs> all of this uh, 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 variance and going 
from the, the daily to the annual, I would like that that result is somewhere close to this. And if I don't put mean reversion in, it will always be higher uh, because I showed you. So we, we want to put some mean reversion in so that we get the result we're after, which is a lower annual volatility. Now, you can make all sorts of arguments against me and say, oh, you got to adjust it for seasonality. Oh, no, maybe there's some... Uh, you can do this on a month-by-month -month basis instead of a day-by-day -day basis. Yes, okay, fine, all of that. Just experiment with this yourself and find a mean reversion factor that works. Now, if I run one thing, oh, look at this. I get very close to the annual volatility. And look at this uh, uh, graph. Okay, there's nothing crazy happening. And then we go to another one. This one's a little bit low. Another one, this one's a little bit high, and that seems pretty good. Now, you could make a, a, a million simulations, thousands of simulations, and try to experiment with this mean reversion factor that gives you the answer. It gives you the answer in terms of the annual deviation that you want. This is not one of my other videos just on how to make a timeline in project finance or how to shut up those stupid auditors. Okay, this is uh, 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 this is is something that if you have a financial model with some real commodity prices in, how can you do this in a realistic way? And I'm just looking at this graph as I'm doing this. I should be looking at this one, but we with this mean reversion, I get a very high. Uh, 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 um, volatility over a short period, and then I get about the right volatility. Now, you can say, oh, there must be some fancy formula to do that. And I've read up. This is one thing I have read up. And there's nothing that really is satisfactory. Oh, I've got a few things where the volatility is a little bit higher on an annual basis. Maybe I could have put a higher mean reversion in. So you can do this. You could keep track of it. And, and, and I did that once. And I I, I just ran out of time. Now, the big deal here is when you're finished with this, and we'll do the, uh, um, show you how to make the VBA, you, you can run this for many, many times. And in this case, you can see that I ran it many times. This is only 2,000, not that many. But I get a consistent, and notice that the, 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 volatility this time does not increase. This is from the annual. It's really this line that does not increase. And we don't have this, this situation where the variance goes up consistently over time. It gradually stays the same, but at the same time, you do get this volatility. You get an annual volatility. This simple annual, by the way, is the old method without a, a, a any mean reversion. All right. And now when we apply mean reversion into our financial model, we get a completely different result. When, when you, uh, if you, so I'm just going to, so this, I, I, I go through how you, oops, I have a blank one there. I, I go through the steps for this, and then I'm just going to give you the kind of answer, and I'm going to make a, a second video on, on the, putting how, how to how to put together a financial model that allows you to keep track of defaults and cash sweeps and how to kind of take a, a, a volatile series and in this case we had a cash sweep here and then we had a default you pay the default default have a cash sweep then it goes down another default pay it back, cash sweep, default, cash sweep. At the very end, ah, shoot, we got some low ones and we didn't pay off all our debt at the end. That's a default. How we do that, and then when you make your simulation model, again, psychologically include these kind of things so you can keep track of the defaults. And here, at the very, very end, here is the scenario with no mean reversion. And you get these very high default levels. And you say, I can't put this much debt in my project with commodity prices because I get 8% uh, 
with no sweep, I get an 8% default with a cash flow fee, 5%. How we make our, our, our uh, essentially it's a data table, but a data table with a simulation. How we do that, I want to show you with VBA because my friend, he used to be my friend, and now he sent me that mean, mean email. He says, oh, I'm so mad at you. Okay, okay. If you put mean reverse, so I'm going to show you the VBA how to do that. But if you put mean reversion in, you've got a completely different result, a completely different result. And let's finish this thing by talking about mean reversion in the context, in the context of caring more about oil prices than those poor people who are having bombs dropped at them. You know, we let's see what happens. The only comfort we can have in life here is that, okay, maybe we don't know what the long-term cost of production is. We know that there are a lot of electric cars coming out, and whatever. Uh, uh, we know there's a lot of people driving more as well, but okay, and there are other things petroleum is used for, but there's some long-term cost of production. And these things do tend to move, and maybe the price of oil would get so high that the world will go into recession and then the demand will go down. Maybe finally, when I go to the, to the, uh, I drive around, I will see some cars that are not gigantic trucks with those big, gigantic wheels and, 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 and you know, personal trucks or SUVs. Maybe I'll see some of that. And maybe I'll see somebody riding a bicycle. Who knows? Okay, but that's all that stuff causes mean reversion. And there are shocks. But don't forget, these are short-term kind of things. Whereas if you blow up the, some of the world's most beautiful cities, I don't think that's quite a short term. That's a non-mean reverting kind of analysis. Enough of this. I shouldn't say these kind of things. Okay, that's mean reversion. There's a lot of philosophy around it. And the real problem is computing mean reversion. And I use Monte Carlo to get that 0.6% number. Okay, that's enough of this one. I'll make another video on uh, on, on, on how we really put it in a financial model.